Hey, so, um, what, what exactly was that and what exactly did we pay for? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Mandy watching Swell Entertainment, and this might be maybe the shortest video I have ever put out in the last four years, because I'm a talker, I'm a rambler, but there was so little here that I want to talk about this. I want to talk about Summer Games Fest. That's the event that I went to. And I want to talk about gaming events in general, because I've been to quite a few now, and I have opinions, um, and I want to talk about this. But I'm like, I, I would not be shocked if I barely got to eight minutes on this. Like, I, I think this might be the shortest video I've put out in a while, because there was just nothing here. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Parade. Summer is the perfect time of year to do a complete overhaul of your underwear. Toss out the old and find some new. And it's also the perfect time of year because Parade has their summer sale going on right now. Parade has tons of affordable basics and creative colors and fun designs, and they're all extremely comfortable. A few of my favorite pieces from Parade that I currently have, two words, okay, pasta, Print, actually called Pasta Party. Bralette is their Sweetheart Satin and it's in the long line bralette cut. It's super buttery soft and the Pasta Party pattern is just so cute. It literally just looks like drawn on pasta sketches like on your bralette. And I, I don't know, I just like fun underwear like that. If someone's seeing it or not, I think because basics are so part of our everyday lives, we forget how fun they can be while also being functional. Also as someone with smaller chest, I also love a balconette bra. Now this is their ultra soft dream balconette bra and this is in the color mint chocolate chip. Perfect day-to-day -day bra just to help give your boobs a little bit of shape, but not too much pressure, no padding, no pushing, nothing, just all the good booby shape. But maybe your summer reset doesn't include bras. That's okay. Parade has tons of underwear and fun colors for you to choose from. Whatever you might be looking for for your basics, you will find it with Parade and you will find it at a discount in their summer sale. Get a fresh start on your summer by stocking up on new basics. Go to parade.com slash swell50 or go ahead and click the link in my description box and use code swell50 to get 50% off your order. And thank you again to Parade for sponsoring this video. First and foremost, why did I go to Summer Games Fest? Well, my friend Scootish wanted me to go with him. He's like, do you wanna go? It's an event, it might be a nightmare. I was like, sure, I'm down. If I can go, it's at the YouTube theater in LA. I live in LA. Easy event to go and do in a month where I'm not supposed to be traveling whatsoever because my health isn't doing great because I'm crazy. Uh, a few days before Summer Games Fest, there was this article that came out. Jeff Keighley wants you to lower your expectations for Summer Game Fest. Jeff Keighley is the, uh, you know, host and founder of the Summer Games Fest as well as the Game Awards. Now I previously went to the Game Awards earlier this year and that was also I had feelings about it. I had a good time, because I always have a good time. I make my best. I tried to have a good time here. There wasn't much to have a good time about, but I did my very best, which is that that's where I think I'm really like bothered by this event. Because I'm someone I go into these events with like, I'm gonna have a good time regardless. The event could be a nightmare. An event could catch fire with me trapped inside. And I would still be like, oh my gosh, I had a good time. I met cool people. Let's make a video about how their fire safety was horrible. You know, like like I I will have a good time regardless. The event could be horrific and I will make sure that I have a good time. And that was my goal this time around. And yet I don't know what I was supposed to have enjoyed about that really. Um, but anyways, if you're hoping to see an endless parade of world premiere announcements at this year's summer game fest, maybe don't. The show's host, Jeff Keighley, is getting out ahead of this year's iteration of the annual June showcase to set expectations for fans about what exactly will be at the show. As the widely accepted replacement for the now dead E3, fans expect big announcements during SGF. And while there will be lots of announcements about games, the games in question will predominantly be updates on titles we already know about, not new announcements. Keighley gave a sneak peek at what the summer showcase will entail and perhaps more interesting, what it won't. There will be definitely new announcements, Keely assured, but the show is largely focused on, I think, existing games that have new updates for fans. I would rather you don't do this. With what we got, you'd rather have people go into your event excited and then be disappointed, then go in expecting nothing and then give them nothing. Because then it's just like a, what was this? There were cool things announced, but they were cool to me as someone who's not a gamer. And Scootish enjoyed a couple of things where he was like, oh, that looks cool. There was one thing where he got really excited about and Scootish is gonna, I'm sure, talk about it on his channel as well and on Twitch as well. But obviously as someone who's not a gamer, I was just like, there's certain things that I thought were cool. And there were certain things where I was just like, I was literally like just looking at Scootish like, is this new? Why is no one excited? No one seems excited about this. It's crazy. Like to give this, like lower your expectations, it's just so crazy. Have respect for yourself and your event and don't do this ever again. 
don't do this. Don't mitigate expectations because then people said, like there was one guy with Scooter showed me this tweet. This guy said, this event's going to suck. Jeff Keeley responded and said, wait for the event first. And then he printed out that tweet and went to the event holding that tweet and said, okay, I'm here. I don't know what experience that guy had, but I'm assuming that bit that he did was the funniest part of the day for him. We were able to buy tickets the night before. Um, there were two different ticket prices. There was a $41 ticket option and a $1,500 ticket option for the pit to be sitting amongst, I'm assuming the devs. They were resale tickets in the, in the pit. Scootish jokingly, cause I was gonna Venmo him cause he was just gonna get the tickets. He was like, should I get the $41 ones or the really expensive ones? I said, do not, don't you dare get the really expensive ones. Just, just get the $41 ones. So he gets $41 tickets and I genuinely, Walking out of there, my only real thought was, how can you legally charge $41 for this? I feel scammed. So this article is from March 13th of this year, and it's talking about the date announcement for Summer Games Fest. In a press release email to Kotaku, the SGF PR team said that the event will take place on June 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern time at the YouTube Theater in LA's Hollywood Park. Members of the public can attend and tickets will go on sale May 7th at Ticketmaster. We don't know how long the presentation will run for or what exactly will be shown, but what we do know, we'll get new video game announcements, first looks, and trailers. Keeley also tweeted about it on March 13th, saying there would be thousands of in-person fans and millions watching online. So right off the bat, the fact that we were able to get tickets a whopping day before the event. Bad. I don't know if I, I don't think I need to explain that to you. That's not good really ever, especially an event like this. That's like supposedly like an industry event that should be locked out, sold out. Why that doesn't happen is because they did that announcement. Maybe it was sold out and then he made that announcement a bunch of people put tickets on sale. But even day of walking in there, like there was a lot of empty seats in the sections we were at. Also that YouTube theater has a whole mezzanine balcony area. They did not sell any tickets to that zone. If they did, they moved people up into the uh, orchestra and back orchestra section. They did not fill up that top row whatsoever. It was all in the bottom. And even then they did not sell that out, which is, I don't know why you even do it this way. That was, that was weird. First, they did not seem to make it clear whatsoever when doors open, anything like that. I asked Scooter, she's like, oh yeah, it doesn't say. It just says it starts at two. Now, I think I misread it because I thought it went from two to 5 p.m., okay? But I think what happened is that on my phone, when I was looking it up day of to figure out like how long we were gonna be there, I think because the start time for Eastern time is 5 p.m. So I think my brain just said, two to five is when we thought it was gonna go. But Scootish also stopped, thought the same thing, so did a couple other people. It ended up ending right at four. They're yelling at people, no backpacks, so that's fun. I have contraband in my backpack. We're so close to them, you could probably, they could probably hear you if you're not careful. Should I tell them? No. As we are getting closer to the security check of the line, because it's the YouTube theater, I always appreciate a good security check. They start yelling at us about backpacks and apparently battery packs and things like that, which like I always say, if your venue has restrictions on certain bag types and all of that, if you are an independent event operating at that venue, you should say in the email or the ticket or whatever, what are the venue restrictions for your bags? What can you can, can bring in? Do you need closed toed shoes because it's an active crime scene? I don't know, something. Tell me what I need to, can and can't bring. They didn't seem to do that. At least that's based on, I never actually saw this ticket. Scootish did, I just Venmoed him, okay? Then there were food trucks outside, okay? So Scootish got in line. There was like two to three, I think there's two food trucks, okay? Long lines. We got there again before two. We got there around like one-ish, waiting in line and then they said at 1.55, okay, after we're waiting in line for food that entire time, there's nothing really inside the lobby area. There's uh, a bar space, there's uh, some chips and stuff being said, but there's no food allowed inside the theater, okay? Fair, understandable. Some people snuck stuff in, but different theaters have different rules. So we're waiting outside and they said, hey, 1.55, we're closing these doors. We will not reopen these doors until 10 minutes after show starts. Get inside now or you will be locked out till 10 minutes into the show. All right, so Scootish abandons line. We go and sit down. Like I said, lots of empty spaces where we are. We're off to the side. We did meet a lot of YouTubers and people that we spoke to that had been invited to this for free. Now a lot of people also get invited to the Game Awards and other various award shows for free when it comes to games and various events for free. Like I've said previously, I was invited to BlizzCon for free. BlizzCon is also done in the water, which sucks because BlizzCon was fun. That was a lot. I was more impressed by the layout than anything. Like the amount of things to do was not zero, but it was quite a bit. Then they said, hey, we're doing the safety announcements. We're in our seats as they're doing the safety announcements and explaining like these are the exits, all that. Scooters kept joking that maybe this was a stand-up comedian and that they were gonna like get us all ready to go, which I don't know. I think that would have been something. You could have, I honestly, 
Scooters is right. You should have had a stand-up comedian or something just to get us excited, pumped up a little bit. To go into this event cold like that, I don't think it was a good move. Jeff Keighley comes out, announces as the, the founder of the Game Awards, all this stuff, and just starts talking about the game, starts playing the games. And my issue, for those who don't, never saw my Game Awards, is it was barely an award show in that there was a lot of awards, but they were sandwiched in three hours of just ads, okay, for video games, which fun and fair and fine. But that's what this was without the award show element. And in a, at least that, at least the game awards have an award show element. There is something else there for me to watch and enjoy and interact with. There was nothing here but ads and then weird puns. There was two announcers, there was Jeff and then this other woman. And she at one point made a joke that was like, oh, I can't wait to see what's next in the Arkham universe or something like that, that a bunch of people thought was really, really funny because it was just like cheesy, you know? But a lot of the lines that were written for Jeff and her were both very cheesy. There was a couple of game announcements and a couple of things announced that I thought were like, I was like, oh, this looks cool. Like I would want to play this. There was this running really funny moment where there was like, oh yeah, uh, the next Batman game. Everyone was like, oh, yay. And then all of a sudden they said in VR, oh, like deep size. I wish I got it on camera, but I don't even think I would have captured it properly. Like it was so much elation and then immediate drop down. I don't know what people think, why people do or don't like VR. I have heard that it's very disorienting. I've heard it's very hit or miss when it comes to VR games. So take that as you will. Some other games, there was a, a cuff game that looked fun where it's like you're, you're trying to break out of prison and also beat up cops. All right, we have to escape. And then there's a plane, it's a whole thing. That ad looked fun. There was a few ads where I was just like this, felt weird. Like there was an ad for skate that didn't seem like an ad for skate. It was called M Corp. It was a live action commercial. Okay. And it was like, listen, we're buying up the city. Sure. Selling it for pennies on the dollar. No, we're not. We believe in the city. We trust in you. And then it's like, oh no, this is like a shady company. And I was like, oh, this is something. What's this? This is cool. And then they cut to black. Jeff Keighley walks out. The guy who is in the, I don't know his name. I'm sorry. Talks to Jeff. And then they go and show the actual trailer for Skate coming soon, because they're working on it still. Like there was like a whole thing with it. I thought it was funny. Like Skate in an abandoned uh, city, cool. Love that, that's fun. But that whole setup and then cut, because I was like, oh, this is, seems like a cool evil company game. That seems fun. And then no, it's Skate. But that weird gap to have Jeff be involved in it, that, that, I don't think that worked. That really lost, I think you lost a lot of people in that. Because the game, I'm, so, I'm sure skate's fine. I'm sure skate's, skate's great. That was a very weird way to do that. It felt very, disingenuous isn't the word. Disjointed. Let's go with that. Disjointed. It felt very weird. And I was just like, mm, I don't like how this is rolled out. They announced quite a few games that I was like, okay, this is cool. The Alan Wake uh, expansion game that they're doing, I think Sleep at Night or something was the name of it. Scooters was very excited about that because he loves Alan Wake too. Uh, but basically they're doing a uh, game extension pack thing. Don't ask me. The head dev for Alan Wake came out and did the dance from the Game Awards. That was the whole thing. They announced the game, showed the trailer and they said, and this will be available. And everyone's like, oh, because everyone's so excited about the game. And they're here thinking they're going to hear November, December, January, sometime, 2025, maybe. No, 24 hours. That's the shit I like to see. That is fun. Hey, you're going to have to wait for this. Actually, tomorrow, this time tomorrow, you'll be playing this game. That's brilliant. That's fantastic timing. More things like that. That was great. Jason Blum came out and talked about how Blumhouse is getting into the indie game sector. And they said, don't worry, we are working on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. That's all that Dexterto shared on their, their thread. I thought that was interesting because uh, Blumhouse launched not one, not two, but like six games in one trailer. They're not just launching a game. They're launching a whole gaming org essentially like a whole gaming company with six games. Uh, brilliant, cool. It fits their business model fantastically, frankly. Like that's, I totally can see why they went that route with indie games versus like, let's do one and see what happens. You know, no, let's do six. At least two of these will be good, maybe. Great, fantastic, love it. Uh, the Some of them looked great. Some of them looked very fun. Love some different art styles in there. Really cool, excited to check those out. Another thing that got announced I thought was really cool was Outer Otter. And that is from the developers of Among Us. And they wanted to spread the love and basically make a org that helps 
with getting indie games made, which I thought was really cool. And they announced a ton of games that are being made with that and like their various release dates and things like that. Those, I was like, that's really what stuck with me more than anything. Nothing else really stuck with me. It felt like a very weird event because it, it was it was just two hours. They kept bringing up Day of the Devs and they kept saying, stick around for Day of the Devs. And I was like, oh cool, we get to be here till five. We get to stick around and watch Day of the Devs. This is cool. And also I think on here as well, because I'm looking at it now, Day of the Devs, 4 p.m. start time, okay? So I'm thinking as we're sitting there that I get to stay for Day of the Devs. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's all indie games. That's gonna be fun. Okay, cool. Then four, they said, okay, they close it out and everyone gets up and starts leaving. I was like, oh, we don't get to stay? I was like, I guess not. I want Kingdom Hearts. That's it? The two hours flew by. Someone said like, oh, the first hour flew by. The second hour I was watching that clock. It was draining on. I was like, no, no, no. That felt like nothing. That felt like, like a lot but also nothing at the same time. Like there was a lot of information because there's a lot of game trailers, but that those two hours flew by in a way that I'm genuinely shocked by because there it felt like there was also nothing there. No day of the devs for us, which disappointed by. I was excited to see that. I guess it, that's on me though, for just assuming that I was involved with Summer Game Fest, even though it was involved in Summer Game Fest, just not this event. Weird. We exited the theater and we were waiting. Scooch went to the bathroom. I was waiting talking with it by 4 15 they demanded that we leave the theater space they said they started clearing us out we go outside talking with a couple of people then they start clearing us out again within 10 minutes so we don't even get to like chat network with other gamers creators that are there food trucks were selling food sure but they were also like get out so apparently there's oh sorry apparently there's like a youtube event actually so they just asked us all to leave it's been a whopping 15 minutes since the show ended and they said, get out. <laughs> so that's fun. I don't know what we paid 40 bucks for. And Scootish thought there was a uh, private YouTube event happening, probably. But if that's the case, get a different venue. Hey, there's another event right after your event. Okay, cool. Well, we want to be able to have people like to have the ability to mingle, maybe have some game devs, set up some tables or whatever, or some, some download codes, some pre-save codes, whatever, have displays out. No, none of that. No. Okay, cool. You go somewhere else. I... How did you charge 41 bucks for this? I, I don't, I genuinely don't know. It was a nothing burger. It felt like a nothing burger. As a gamer, scootish, and as a not gamer, me, it felt like a nothing burger. The best part of the night was the sushi we went and got afterwards, away from the event. That was the best part of it. Scootish was excited because a few games that they announced he was excited about, but there were things that he pretty much already knew about. Um, aside from the John Wick 2 thing, that that he was very excited about. I don't even know how you fix that. I literally was like watching this, I was like, oh, okay, like I can see how maybe the game awards can be improved upon if they just do like a winter games fest instead of a summer games fest as well. And then we've got all those trailers in the, the winter games fest, like breaking it up and do this like a quarterly event. Having an in-person audience, I just think is a waste of time. I, I just, I, I don't think you needed to do that. I think this was a mistake. I think it was weird. I, I don't, mm. anyways, that's going to be it. Did you watch Summer Games Fest? Did you also think it was gonna be more than two hours? Did you watch Day of the Devs? Any games that you thought were cool? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder that I stream on Twitch, reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder to use code Swell for 10% off on Gamer Subs. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like to my Patreon, love this down below. Like some of my little social media, let it be all up here, and that's me and have a lovely day, goodbye. Like even something as simple as like, once we're all inside the theater, you have posters or something brought outside of the, the theater itself, okay? Of like all the different games that were announced. So then we can go and take photos with like the games that got announced that like people like. That's something, and it gets them out of the theater without you having to have employees yell at people. Thank you, Oz, Eva, Ayana, Abby, Angel, Goth, Glenn, Palace, Pink, Jasmine, Lauren, Amy, Aslan, Medic, Rosie, Victor, Andrew, Tenzin, Sam, Mae West, Michael, Ryan, Adira, Nathan, Zwink, Literal, Jeffrey, Randy, QWERTY, Nomad, Thomas, Tasha, Donnie, Winter, Kenny, Robert, Cameron, Elliot.